Okay, so we're back and it's time for listener letters. Yes, it is. Send your questions to asktherita at gmail.com. And uh, so let's just jump right in this week with a letter from Tiffany who says, Not too long ago, my younger male cousin asked for my female best friend's phone number. After asking me a thousand times, I finally asked her and she agreed that he could have it. The only thing that I have a problem with is that she has an STD that is not curable. I hinted about this to my cousin without trying to tell her business, but I eventually just gave him her phone number and left it alone. Our other best friend recently told me that the two of them have had unprotected sex. And with this info, I called my friend and asked if she told him about her STD situation before they had sex. She calmly said no, and I proceeded to unmercifully curse her out. My cousin is not the first person she has slept with without disclosing her status, and I have cursed her her ass out on numerous occasions. I now feel bad for my cousin and kind of feel like this is all my fault. Do y'all think this is something she and I can get over? What would you do? Um, (laughs) Your face. Who asked for whose number? So the boy, who is her cousin, asked for her female best friend's phone number. Okay, the one with the hot. Yes, the one with the radioactive vagina. Right. Um, First of all, um, sweetness, whatever your name is. Tiffany. Tiff. This is not your Tiff. This isn't your (laughs) don't feel Tiffed. Look at you. (laughs) It's not, you know, this isn't your fault. Don't Mm -hmm. blame yourself. You're not the one with whatever, you know, terror crawling on inside that's not you nope and you were not the one who was irresponsible enough to be sleeping with someone unprotected on top of knowing that you have a disease and not disclosing it like that's that it, it's not even close to being your goddamn fault right. you know what i'm saying so because your friend whether you knew about it or not and even if she has done this to other people before it's not your fault her irresponsibility is not your fault you're not to blame for that at all do i think that y'all can get over that i wouldn't be able to i'd probably whoop her ass (laughs) but lord i mean if i were you right um but i'm not uh i'm not suggesting that you do that i'm just saying what i would do and we've already established that i'm a horrible person um i would however definitely tell my cousin um and probably just never speak to the bitch again wow I mean, I'm not saying that I disagree with you, but, like, I just feel like as far as this situation is concerned, it's not really your business. Like, that's your cousin, true. But your cousin knew he was having unprotected sex when he did it. And I assume he's old enough to know that with unprotected sex can come all kinds of terrible things like kids and STDs, creepy crawlies in your balls. Feelings. All kinds of shit get transmitted during unprotected sex. And you just never know which one you're going to catch. So I feel like the rest of us have decided, you know, condoms and birth control are the way to go to just avoid these kinds of issues. So really, abstinence abstinence is the fucking MVP out here. It really is the goat. Like you just cannot beat abstinence. But girl, this is not I feel like you're you're taking the responsibility onto your own shoulders when this these are two adults who made the decision to have unprotected sex. Like the fact that you knew she had an STD and she may have passed it along to your cousin is unfortunate, but doesn't really change the situation because it wasn't your decision to make. Like it's not your fault that your cousin decided to sleep with somebody without a condom. Now, I do understand feeling a way about her for not telling your cousin because it's like, all right, bitch, you might be able to. I mean, it's obviously your pussy. I just can't go around telling your pussy's business. But if you are going to have sex with somebody and you know you have an incurable STD, I feel like you really should disclose that to people. Curable or in- regardless if you have something funny going on down there you should let the people that you are sleeping with know so that they can make a decision about whether they still want to sleep with you i feel like that's just common courtesy regardless of which std or std or sti you have this this right here though like if it was my cousin i don't think i would be able to to continue to call this girl my friend like you can't just come kick it with me and i know that you did something grimy to my family like i have to draw the line there asses would be whooped (laughs) Is all I'm saying on my side, my portion yeah. of things. Even if my dumbass cousin did decide to go up in some girl raw, not knowing what the fuck was going on down there, not asking no motherfucking questions, like, asses still have to be whooped because you knew and now 
what I, I just can't do it. Yeah. Like, my family would be the type to smack the shit out of both of them. Like, just be, but, you know, she's getting an extra splat. Like, she's getting, like, a few more, you know. So <laughs> there's that. Okay, well, I mean, I probably would not whoop her ass, but I definitely would not yeah, continue don't, to talk to her. no violence. I mean, I just, I don't even think I would want to. I really think I would be looking at my cousin like, why would you just fuck somebody raw? Why would you just fuck somebody raw? And you don't know what they have or what they don't. Like, you didn't, obviously you didn't have a conversation about it. Because, nigga. You didn't get tested. You just decided to fuck her raw? Like, you didn't think about this? Do y'all, are y'all aware that these, this shit is real? Like, sex is real. STDs are real. Why do, people act like the shit is in a book and somebody just made it up and it's just fiction as hell and you're not really gonna walk away with a growth on your genitals like it's very possible why are y'all fucking around it's 2014 y'all know better so that's how i feel about it but, okay okay <laughs> let's move on to the next question it comes from mina who says my father has been living with me for over two months he asked if he could stay in july for one month i'm already confused <laughs> confused already he asked if he could stay with me in july for one month and now it's september going on going on october and this shit is getting out of control i live in a one-bedroom loft so i can hear his conversation conversations with his friends and his ladies he snores on my living room floor he's got to get out <laughs> he's got to get out and he asks me he off. has to leave <laughs> i'm not even half kick done kick him out and he asks me your often. daddy has to find some place <laughs> else to live he has to find some place else to live sweet what is this one's name chocolate this drop is what mina. is it mina sweetheart you knew before you hit send that i was going to tell your motherfucking ass to kick your daddy out and i know that you love him i know that you do but there's no bit so i guess i could just skip through all the things that daddy does just go ahead no okay. let's, let's let's just list them all right mm -hmm. he snores on my living room floor and mm. asks me often if and when i will be coming home mm. i don't have company come over and now my friends are not comfortable because he lightweight tries to get at them by flirting and that's also very embarrassing mm. to top it off he does things like buy groceries and cleans but feels like he should only pay a portion of the rent because he says he's looking to move and has to pay a deposit etc mm -hmm. blah 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 mm. I really can't take this any longer but I don't know how to tell his ass to get the fuck out of my house without mm. feeling like I'm being mean or rude to my father please help mm. yes you know what and there is no nice way to say get the fuck out of my house because that's really what you're what well, you're going you know to be what? saying not every situation calls for nice it doesn't sometimes the situation calls for real and right now, you are paying rent in an apartment, a one-bedroom apartment that you are sharing with your dad. Real rent in a real one-bedroom loft with your real daddy eating your real snacks, trying to fuck your real friends. Laid up in your real-ass living room every day. That would get on my nerves. I can't come home every day. Shit, probably having swinger parties when your ass is at work, which is uh, why he's asking you what time you coming home. Yeah. So you can clear it all out and, and buff the jizz off the wall before you get back. <laughs> Kick his ass out. He has to eat. And you he do does, it with girl. love. He has to You go. do it with love. You say, because I love you, you have got to go. It is an embarrassment for you as my grown-ass daddy to be in here drinking Smirnoff ice right. and just living, you know, running up my goddamn AC. You are my daddy and you need to, you have 30 days. <laughs> yeah, so you know your daddy better than we do, but I feel like I would be like, so listen, this was supposed to be a one-month situation and it's not, it's not, it's turned into a three month, but it won't be a four month. It won't be a four. It's not going to be, you're not going to complete a fourth month in my apartment. You're going to leave before it gets too cold for me to be able to kick you out, like with a conscience. I can't just kick you out if it's <laughs> negative six degrees. You're going to go before Halloween. Like, I'd like to say that I dropped my daddy's black ass right off into 10 inches of snow, but that I have like, <laughs> like my daddy is like, a good person so i don't like i can't like no shade but like my daddy we ain't never had no damn lights off my daddy paid every motherfucker but my daddy would ne my daddy would never never ever i would mm -mm. never have to kick my daddy out of nowhere because there is never going to be a time where my daddy has to look to me he would never ask to live with me I don't know how bad shit would have to get in my daddy's life for him to be like, let me come stay with you. I just really can't. He, like, I feel like, like he would be like missing limbs, God forbid. Like, it would have, like, he would have nowhere unstill and still. That nigga would make an arm mm -hmm. out of some bamboo and aloe. I don't know. Whatever the fuck it takes 
Yeah. Before. Because, like, you somebody's daddy. Right. Like, you, not even just somebody, like, you my daddy. Like, and you are in the living room of my apartment disrupting my peace. Like, girl, that's your place. And you get have the out. right to have whoever you want in there. Get if he's out. getting on your nerves and not acting right, tell him to get his shit and go. He has, a, evidently, he has a job. He's able to save up money for rent and deposit, all that. That's what he should have been doing he's all summer while he was parlaying in your living room fucking bitches and he eating Cheetos. He should have been had his shit together, and now it's about to get very real. You have until Halloween, my nigga. If you need some help, you know, please feel free to log onto my computer and go to Craigslist, find you somewhere to go. But you are going to get out of my house. By That's Halloween. going to happen. Yes. Or else I got a trick for your ass. So it will be a treat <laughs> for me. Get out. Out so say it in whatever way you communicate with your daddy but that's definitely our advice our last question today comes from louie who says today my closest cousin's wife gave me a call and said that she wanted to send my cousin up to the city as a surprise to stay with me for a couple of days for his birthday you read so fast do i but i am also not sober okay so let me go let me i'm gonna start that over and maybe just slow it down a little bit no it's fine or do you want to try to maybe listen faster you're not going to judge me today <laughs> the letter said that she wanted to send my cousin to the city as a surprise to stay with me for a couple of days for his birthday because you are he's such a bitch <laughs> because he's never been on a trip out of florida gotcha she wanted to give me two months notice and normally i would be very excited for this because i love my cousin and his wife they are one of the few sensible people in my family however there's just one problem i have not come out to them yet I have good reason to believe that they won't take it well, as they have said numerous homophobic things around me. Once they said they were going to cut their young son's hair because my cousin didn't want to raise no punks, and he has chastised his son for standing like a girl. They are deep in the church because he's a music minister, and she leads praise and worship with him every Sunday, and they believe that all gays are going to hell. I bet you they also fight, eat pork, and spit. I, I'm certain they do. I bet they mix they fabrics and everything but let's not get that real all this being said i still love my cousin and his wife and enjoy being around them most of the time i spend my childhood and teenage years with my cousin being a major part of my life please help what should i do now he put some other information in here some back information about how like he really does like love and respect his family and he's been kind of planning to tell them but never really found the right time so the fuck do you need to tell your cousin your sexuality for well because he's insistent that he's not going to go back into the closet at any point in time ever so theoretically you know if your cousin comes to stay with you for a little while for his birthday he's going to see something gay happening like maybe you have a boo who's coming over and you're gonna do gay things with him or what the fuck do you need to come out to your cousin for do you not is this not familiar to you when like people ask you like oh so who you are are you dating you're coming to stay with me yeah mind your motherfucking business (laughs) i will have whoever i have a, a million man march in this goddamn apartment if i want to bitch and if you see some gay shit or whatever and you have a question feel free to ask so and you it don't, is what it is. So you and if you don't like it, you can get the fuck out. Like, what? <laughs> so you wouldn't be like, hey, before you come, just so you know, I know you're super homophobic, love you anyway, but I totally take it up the ass. So if that's an issue for you, you might not want to come visit me. Like, I feel like I would say something in advance just to avoid the bullshit of you being confronted head on with my homosexuality and being shocked by it. Maybe I'm just like, I honestly don't care. I just don't feel like sexuality is a big deal. It's only a big deal because dumb, ignorant ass people make it a big deal. They have to act like it defines the person. They have to act like it's just this whole thing that you're just on this slippery slope to hell and God only knows whatever the hell else, but you just leave out all of these other portions of the Bible where God is side-eyeing your ass. And like, here you, so, but the usuals come to my house He's supposed to come spend time in my apartment that is most likely way more expensive than it needs to be in New York City. And I have to be worried about how you gonna feel about me kiss the fattest part of my ass. If you want to have a conversation with him prior, because I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want for him to come up there and you love and respect your family and you know we gotta be that fist, whatever. So if you want to have the conversation with him first, 
then fine, have the conversation with him first. And then if he takes it the wrong way, then, you know, that will be an unfortunate situation. But also realize that you are in this motherfucker doing you. <laughs> Can't nobody change that. And you suck a dick if you want. You suck three dicks if you want to. Yeah. Shout out to my homegirl, Chrissy, on Tumblr. You know somebody <laughs> who YouTube. sucks three dicks no you know um oh that video yeah okay okay where she said you know like if i want to suck a dick i can do like you're not gonna make me as a woman feel crazy because i may happen to enjoy dicks or sucking them like right and while we're talking about that what the fuck how are you gonna try and make somebody like how are you gonna try and make a girl feel crazy because she says she likes to suck dick but all you hoes want your dick suck like all you hoe ass things so then you find and you can't clown girls for sucking dick if you enjoy dick and sucks. And the people who like to suck dick suck dick the best. Oh, Lord. So why would you even... With like, enthusiasm. Sh- ex- it's with it's with like gusto. it's on your heart. Like, it's like you're ready and <laughs> like willing. you're enjoying yourself. Because it's a pleasure for this you as fun. well. Yes. So why are you going to try... <sighs> you would think if you found somebody who enjoyed sucking dick, you would realize that you have found a good thing and you would like... Do- Treasure then. Yes. Like maybe you have found a gem, a diamond in the rough. You have found a young lady who loves nothing more than to get on her knees and service you orally. Why would you not just take that as a blessing? And you need to get your ass down there and start snacking as well. You ain't never, ever, ever, ever going to find a woman who's like, I'm going to talk shit about my boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever because they love to eat pussy. Like women are not that fucking stupid. Why would you take such a gift? It's just, it's such a blessing to have somebody. I wish I was straight so bad. I wish, like, I sometimes, I just wish I just did not have to deal with niggas. You just ain't never gonna hear women getting on Twitter talking uh, about, oh, my ex boyfriend is such a hoe. He just, that nigga ate pussy too good. Like, nigga, what? There's no (laughs) sense. How are you complaining that somebody is too good at sex? Y'all don't deserve pussy. Like, anyway, I already knew it, but just going off y'all's reactions to back to mouth to sex, Louis. His okay. name is Louis. So, so Malcolm, I, I feel like what you have to do <laughs> is like you can have the conversation if you want to have it. Um, well, he didn't want to do it. He mentioned that he didn't want to do it over the phone. He felt like this was something he should have done in person. But so you gonna have them come over there and then like. I just don't feel like it. Like, it's so cut. I don't understand if it was, like, your dad or brother. But, you know, a lot of people have, like, really, really close relationships with their cousins. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I mean, I have close relationships with a few of my cousins, but some people have cousins that are, like, siblings. Yeah. My so, extended family is like that. Right. Everybody is super close. So, you know, I, I guess you can go ahead and have the conversation with them, you know, when he gets there. You'd be surprised because I have family members and friends who, before they knew that, I mean, well, before before I confirmed that I was gay, <laughs> they, you know, said lots of homophobic stuff. And they, like, if I hang around my those same family members, those same friends now, you would never even know. Mm-hmm. Or I would, it would be like it never even happened. So sometimes, like, their ignorance will be placed aside when it's someone that they love. Right. That's true. A lot of times it takes knowing a gay person for people to stop being homophobic. Right. Mm-hmm. It's really sad when that's not the case. When they like know they love somebody who's gay and they still just like are steadfast in their hatred. That's when I'm just like, There's what is wrong with wrong y'all? With like, come on now. How mad can you really be about this? Like mad enough to cut off blood? Like somebody... That, that you, you're supposed to love unconditionally. Yes, and not even just family, because I understand sometimes family can be just blood and blood ain't enough, but, like, people that you have a real connection to. Like, I would be so hurt if somebody in my family was like, I don't fuck with you no more, just off top, just because I heard you date girls, and I don't like it. My like, mom really? is good. My dad is good. My grandma, my grandmothers are good. Mm-hmm. Everybody else can kiss my... I was only, like... Before I had the conversation with my parents, I was only really worried about them. Mm-hmm. Like, I was worried that it would fuck up my relationship with, like, my direct family. Right. And it didn't. I'm good. It could be any cousin. It could be any old uncle, auntie. I love all y'all down. If you have a problem, you don't ever have to speak to me again. But that's just me. Mm-hmm. Go with God. Do what you got to do. Hopefully, everything works out for the best. If it doesn't, as I said, you still out here doing you and suck a dick if you want. Get sucked if you want to. <laughs> Download jacked, delete jacked. I'll see you at the club, honey. We do what we got to. Fuck 
all these other hoes. I would send an email, though. I would. Just as somebody who grew up in that kind of environment where your cousins are like siblings. I can't believe that people still send emails as forms of like casual conversation. (laughs) Well, I mean, this is not really casual. This is like, I need to tell you some shit before you come up here. But I just would not come up. I would not let my cousin, who I know is homophobic, come up to my apartment and then see some gay shit without me saying something well, to my I'm cousin first. Is, why not just do that as a text? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Because emails. I like, mean, because because first of all, I feel like the so formal. okay, but for me, like the number of words I want to use, you don't want that in an iMessage. You're gonna get. Have you ever gotten an iMessage so long that the shit is like truncated and you have to click on it to open the entire message? Yes, there's no. a such thing. Yes, I have gotten an iMessage before with like three thousand characters that is in dedication. it. Dedication. Yes, it is. And and so for all of that, you may just need to go on over to that cute little Gmail app, girl, and just open that up. Okay. But if you don't have a lot to say, like I just personally would be trying to get all in my feelings and get all of it out. Or you could just send a quick text and be like, "That's cool. He can come. Just let him know that dick sucking happens in this apartment. So if he has a problem with it, then he might not want to. Or maybe not. Whatever you feel. Maybe analingus. <laughs> Is it analingus? Analingus? I don't. It's it's. I don't do that, Ingus. It's stay the fuck away from my booty hole, Ingus. It's <laughs> Mo beef us. Yes, you go right ahead. Cooking when I'm dealing with me. You can have all of it. I personally don't want nothing to do with that backdoor business. Like y'all got it. I've heard that is fun, but I'm gonna have to take y'all's word for it. Like okay. I just personally don't think that. You that already is. have like a whole other pie. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like a whole. I don't feel other like I'm dessert. missing out. I already have. I mean, it's like y'all have like key lime. We up. have tiramisu. <laughs> Oh really? It's just like like I mean I guess I'll have both, but you know yeah, do what you got. Yes, and so how do we always peach get off? cobbler? We always get off into just... meringue. <laughs> okay, not meringue. I'm Banana gonna stop this. Pudding. Okay, kids are listening to this. Send your questions to Ask the Ring. <laughs> at gmail.com custard okay <laughs> bye bitch we will be back y'all 